Hello, hello. Welcome to Mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh! I have a pot stats that you're gonna desire? What? Starting with the Big Daddy Pot of Greed, it was so good you draw two cards that we just had to ban it. But with that spawned a bunch of smaller pots uh, that all uh, draw two, but with some terms and conditions involved. And that's what this video is all about. You're not going to believe which one is the best one after we mathematically dive into that. That's going to make Big Daddy Pop proud. Let's jump right in so I can tell you what I'm talking about, baby. And the first pot that I want to talk about and go over mathematically is Pot of Extravagance. What that does is at the start of your main phase, you're going to banish three or six random face down cards from your extra deck. Draw one to three for, or draw one card for every three cards banished. You can't draw any more by card effects. So let's say we're using SP Little Knight as an example. Let's pretend we have three of them in our extra deck. I'm going to go over the odds to banish one, two, or three of those copies, right? let's jump right in into the graphs that i have prepared for us today remember we're either banishing six or three to draw one or two and uh we can be running our cards at one copy two copies or three copies of a card and uh so what do i mean by that well i'm going to give you an example right so let's say tg hyper librarian that's run at one in all formats right now if you choose to banish six cards with pot of extravagance you have a 40 percent chance to banish your hyper librarian and if you choose to banish only three you have a 20 percent chance to banish that hyper librarian going on to let's say on the three cards like the sp little knight i used we have three copies of that in our deck and if we choose to banish six there's a 4.4 percent chance that we banish all three of those copies and why do i bring that up well, because in the OCG, it went from 4.4% chance to 14.29% chance because they moved it from three unlimited to semi-limited at two. And so that's the math with that. And with all of this pot stats here of extravagance, I draw three big conclusions. And that is one, you don't want to run pot of extravagance if there's a card at like TC Hyper Librarian that you're running at just one and that you really need to get out on the field because 40% is just too high to risk. I would not risk that. The second thing is it's really not worth banishing to choose to do three over six because there's a lot of better cards that you can run to just draw one. We're looking to uh, banish six because that gets us draw two. That's really good in card advantage. And the third thing is that hit from SP Little Knight uh, going from three to two i know it was memed on a lot that it does nothing but it's actually quite significant going from 4.4 percent to 14.29 is a 10 percent increase and in statistics is very large so if you have an aggregate of let's say you're playing in a tournament and do like 100 games and you use pot of extravagance in 100 games right so for your next 100 games you are now banishing that sp little knight about 14 times all of your copies which is actually statistically significant because we were only doing that about four times before very big uh especially for the pro scene that's why uh if if you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh competitively you can laugh because you're not going to feel it ha 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 but really the real pros know that we're playing that knows that that's actually a very significant hit let's move on to the next pot so the next pot I want to talk about is Pot of Desires. We're banishing 10 cards from the top of the deck to draw two cards. You can only activate that once per turn. So uh, this is the odds. I did it for a 40 card deck running like one Garnet. If you're running something at two copies or if you're running it at three copies. And I also did the math if you're running a 55 card deck at one copy, two copies or three copies. So for example, if we are running something uh in a 35 card deck at one right uh it's a garnet we have a 28 percent chance to banish our garnet similarly if we're running three copies of a card let's just say we're running three ash blossoms and joyous spring in our 60 card deck and we go first and we use it we only have a 0.46 percent chance of banishing all of our copies of ash blossom in our 60 card deck so with this match here, the Pot of Desirement Banishment Percentage, I also did uh, three conclusions, three big conclusions that can come off of this chart and this data. And that is one, don't run desires with garnets. Again, like before, that 28% chance and even the 18% chance, I believe is just too high to risk. They, It's just too high. So if you're running a one card garnet that you really need to see through your combo, I would not run that. Uh, 
desires, pot of desires. But on the flip side, you will not likely lose all three of your starters if you use pot of desires. You actually only have a 1.83% chance to banish all three of your copies with pot of desires. So that means if you're running something at three, let's say you're running, you're playing, uh, um, snake eyes right and you want to run your snake eye ash and you really need to see snake eye, snake eye ash and let's just say it's unlimited at three no matter what format you only have 1.83 percent chance to banish all three copies of those so yeah go ahead uh feel free and the next uh conclusion i make is that if you the chance to get potted desires from potted desires it wasn't showing in the graph but i just did the math on the side uh, it's relevant in the tcg right now because you could play potted desires at three you have an 11% chance to draw the Pot of Desires when you use Pot of Desires in a 40-card uh, deck and a 7% chance in the 60-card deck. I just thought that's good to know in case it ever got uh, unlimited in OCG and Master Duel. Good numbers to know. And I feel, you know, I usually like to use the bar 15%. Uh, well, since it's 11, I feel that it's not too bad. Maybe run Pot of Desires at 2 if you think it's it's like right on the line. But it's just good math to know. And I think that's that's good numbers. The next pot card I want to talk about is none other than Pot of Duality. You're excavating the top three cards of your deck and adding one of them to your hand. You can't special summon. The turn you activate that card and the rest are getting uh, sh shuffled back in. Uh, the first thing I want to say is if you really want to know more about excavating cards, I did a whole excavating video where I broke down the math between excavating one, two, three, four, and five excavation math. Uh, I'll, I'll put in the video above, uh, the link above, if you wanted to know more about excavation math. But we're talking about pot cards today, and I'm going to leave no stone unturned. So we're talking about Pot of Duality as one of the pots. I've still got some more pots to show you. Pot of Duality, right? Let's use an example. We can't special summon, so the example I'm going to use for you is Fluanderese. This deck is notorious for its normal summons. Let's say we're playing Pot of Duality, and we have it in our hand, and we're looking to get Rabina, right? We don't have Rabina. So we have... Uh, three Rabinas in our deck, we would have a 24% chance to get that Rabina. And let's say now we also are running, let's say everything's unlimited. I don't want to go over formats or whatnot. We're running three maps in our deck, right? So that's three more maps that takes us to 44% chance now to either see the Rabina or the map, right? And then, oh, we can also run the Advent card, right? That's three more, boop, that takes us, if we use Pot of Duality, we now have a 60% chance to basically get our combo started uh with our fluanderies and maybe you know it gets added a little bit higher if you're starting to run these other tech far cards like where uh, for art thou or, or where art thou or whatever it's called and like jack of the hands all these other weird cards then with the more cards that you start running the better the chances that you get more consistent but i do want you to know that the graph does start to tighten up as you get and you, you start experiencing what's called diminishing returns and that's when the graph is tightening up here so what that's saying is uh, you can see here that the start you're getting these big big gains from getting these cards from running your starter cards and then it starts to get diminishing returns until about at about 85 percent that's where it starts getting real tight and that's because 85 percent is a number i use in a lot of my videos and that's because that number has a lot of significance it's also my starter card video the amount that you want to run for starters and because again you start experiencing diminishing returns once you go over 85 percent with starters because what happens is you start seeing way too many starters and the rest of your cards now you start seeing less and less hand traps and tech cards so you actually want to you don't want to be too consistent again being too consistent is a bad thing because you're seeing way too much starters and not as much tech cards and hand traps and other stuff like that just just wanted to bring that up and just wanted to talk about that anyways let's keep moving on uh the next pot that i want to talk about i know i've talked about pot of extravagance but i'm bringing it back up because the next pot is pot of prosperity this card is very similar to extravagance except for instead of random randomly banishing cards we're going to choose the cards that we want to banish we get to choose three to or six cards of our choice excavate the top cards which is also why i wanted to talk about duality because they have a little duality face in there as a little duality face and we get to choose which one we we want to excavate so when we're talking about them in verses a lot of we got to choose between extravagance and prosperity and there's no real math to do on prosperity but we have to analyze it in a more conventional term 
Prosperity is good in decks that want to specifically throw something to the graveyard. Like for Kashtira, they specifically want to throw Infant Track Goliath to the graveyard because that makes their Arise Heart. In formats where Arise Heart is still able to be used, you throw Goliath to the graveyard and it protects your uh, Kashtira Arise Heart. Similarly, it's good going second where you can find those one of tech cards that you might be running in your deck to get you out of a hopeful, a hopeless looking situation. Meanwhile, Extravagance is better because of its pure card advantage. You get to draw two very strong and control decks like, uh, let's say, Labyrinth, for example. They don't care about their extra deck. Very strong there. Very strong in decks like, uh, you know, stun decks that just want the pure card advantage. And let's look at a video uh, that I have more to emphasize this point. This is from Decade's uh, Master Master Duel Tournaments. Uh, like I said, it's from DK Master Duel Tournaments. It's about a 30 second clip. I just want to briefly show you an example. Let's watch it. If anything, the pot screwed him. Yeah, we should have just, uh, th the problem is, why didn't he unicorn then do the pot? You can't, you have to pot at the start of your main phase. It's the first thing you have to do or you don't get to use the pot. And did, we randomly banish cards also. Oh my gosh. We, we banished all three Arise Heart. The math. What What is the math on that? Banishing exactly three cards out of six from your 15 cards? All three are gone. So, uh, yeah. What I want to say about this, uh, if you notice too, he also, not only did he banish all three of his starter uh tier Arise Hearts, he also banished his Zeus as well. And so, uh... Let's break that down, and, and if you notice too, he also had a Pot of Desires in his hand he could have chose to use. So when we're talking about those three three pots, I just want to bring up the numbers again. Um, remember, he only had a 4.4% DK to ask, what is the odds on that? Well, DK, we did the math for you. It's a 4.4% chance that he had that that was going to happen. But he also had a 40% chance to banish that one of Zeus, which is pretty high. So in Kashtira, again, like I said, I wouldn't really, I don't really like uh, Extravagance in Kashtira. Not because of the chance to banish the three Arise Hearts. I don't like my one of Zeus getting banished. I don't like my one of uh, Big Eye getting banished, right? And similarly, he had Kashtira um, Unicorn, but he's also probably running, I think Fenrir was at one or two in that video. So he's he's got a good chance of uh, banishing his, his uh, copies. Because he's playing that too. So, Prosperity was probably the answer in that deck. Maybe he's playing that as well. He's just running all the pot cards because he was trying to be consistent. But I, I just, I just, it, it's, it's fun to see it in a practical example as well. It, sometimes there's no right answer and it comes down to personal choice. But I want to just give you the math so you can use this to your advantage when you're making these decisions to choose which pot. Preferably, I like Prosperity in that situation, but if I was playing again, like if I'm playing Labyrinth or if I'm playing Stun Decks, I want Desires. If I'm playing, you know, uh, or Extravagance, I don't care. Uh, I, I want Desires in the cards that I'm running, like a lot of three card starters in, again. So, or maybe if I don't want to get rid of my whole extra deck and I have half an extra deck, uh, right? I'm running like Ritual Decks, I want Prosperity. Very give and take. I just want to give you the numbers. I have one more pot card to talk about. The last pot card is a riddle, ooh, and that is a question for you guys to think about. What is the only pot card that is also an equip spell? What, Jesse? What are you talking about, Jesse? Well, before I give you the answer to that, if you like these kind of videos where I break down the statistics, I encourage you to subscribe to our community. We are great. We are. We love helping people out with numbers. Uh, leave a comment below if you have a question. We are. Our community is awesome. I love it. Anyways, back to the question. What is the only pot card that is an equip spell? Well, I'll give you a hint. The word pot was in quotation marks. So if you want the answer, pause the video here. Uh, or if you don't want the answer, pause the video here. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you the answer in three, two, one. The only pot card that is an equip spell, well, that is none other than Paralyzing Potion. Oh, get it? Pot shun potion. That's why I said pot in parentheses was a big hint. Uh, anyways, uh, April Fools. I hope you like that little um, 
thing, right? While we're still in April, a um, little, little pot April fool there. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time with more statistics. See you guys.